And so, Hello, everybody, and thank you for having me on today. I'm excited to talk to all of you. Okay, what's uh, what's going on? And welcome back. Thank you. Um, well, right now we're I'm in Los Angeles at home. I'm just relaxing and uh, you know taking a few hours before I head back to the Lucha Underground Temple to continue filming today. It's been a crazy month for me with my return to Impact, shooting season four, getting ready for um, you know WrestleCon coming up, and of course Johnny. And back to my getting married. So it's been a crazy beginning of 2018 for sure. So basically, you're just sitting at home doing nothing. <laughs> for like two hours. <laughs> well, that's your two hours for the month. That's all you get. And the rest, you are working. <laughs> well, you, you I am on, running look, around. <laughs> you hit on so many things I, I want to ask you about right away. Uh, let's just ask you about WrestleCon. A super big announcement okay. we have Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground. Nobody is more in the middle of this than yourself. Oh my gosh, I know. Like, which side am I going to pick? Oh God. Um, it, nothing makes me more excited than having people experience, you know, what Lucha Libre is. And I think that Lucha Underground embodies that, especially with its mix of, you know, its nitty gritty, you know, graphic novel um, aspects. Uh, so, and also just, you know, me being the newest, one of the newest members of the Narcos division and representing impact so you never know i mean i still don't really know what's going to happen that day at that show at wrestlecon on a friday night um will taya from the worldwide underground show up or will taya valkyrie lucha royalty arrive so everyone's just going to have to wait and see but i am just as excited as everybody um and uh, i can't wait to to get there to new orleans it's my first time going to new orleans too so um i'm just excited to take a few days and to explore as well so all right. Well, I don't think it really matters which uh, is, is in New Orleans. The thing I'm most excited for is to see your ring introduction, which is arguably my favorite of anybody on the Impact <laughs> roster. Um, talk to us Thank briefly, you. and I'm going to get to the media questions because we've got a, a load of media waiting to talk to you. But talk to us about your Impact uh, ring entrance. Um, well, it's pretty epic. <laughs> The idea for Lucha Royalty came from um, I was the longest reigning Reina de Reina's champion in AAA, which means Queen of Queens. So, in this in my storyline, um, like about I don't know, maybe like a year and a half ago, I turned on Perros del Mal and I left Perros del Mal to join Johnny Mundo, and um, basically that changed my character into this crazy mad queen person. Um, and that's the character I brought to impact. So when we just, when I discussed my music and everything like that, I just wanted it to come across as something really epic and different um, music that kind of reminds you of battle, you know, the cry of battle that you hear in these, you know, Viking and game of Thrones move, like movies and TV shows. So um, I think that that's um, that that's a pretty good embodiment of it. Um, and I can't wait to really develop that version of Taya a lot more over the next few years and see where she can, where we can go with her because she really is something different. I don't think there is anyone like her in professional wrestling right now. And especially with my combination of styles, I really think that I, it sets me apart. So I'm really excited that impact, you know, really believed in the vision that I had for Taya Valkyrie and let me run with it. And, you know, the wind, the music, the light, everything, it's, it's really creative and really fun. Even your simple walk to the ring is uh, is pretty epic. Yes. <laughs> but that is simply Lucha Royalty. That's Lucha Royalty. You know, um, I just have, I come from a dance background and a theater background, so anything that's theatrical and over the top is just, just my cup of tea. So I love to be able to get creative and think about different costume ideas and different ways of standing and different ways of walking and just really making that character pop out of your television at you. All righty. Well, I could ask you another 50 questions, but there's media galore waiting to talk to you. So we will open it up at this point for media. Uh, as, as always, media, I ask, uh, identify yourself, your media outlet, and please only one question at a time um, before we open it up for second round of questions, because uh, Taya has limited time, and we have a lot of media waiting to talk to her. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Say this, but I, I think you hear it through the, uh, the conference call service. Hit star six to get in queue for, uh, for a question. 
Ty, what do you want to do? You want to go domestic on the first question, or you want to go international? Um, uh, let's go international since I'm a, you know, I'm an international person. Why not? <laughs> All right, here we go. Good evening, Ty. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge in the UK. How are you today? Good. How are you? Fantastic. Yeah, really enjoyed your comeback this week on uh, Impact, and looking forward Thank to seeing you. where the uh, the Rosemary program goes. And it's connected Thank to you. that. So, obviously, before the uh, the last lot of uh, Canada tapings, we had the Red Wedding lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that match, if you can give us any details, because there's a lot of speculation. And is it likely to still go ahead? Um, well, I don't. I don't want to give away any more spoilers than you know everyone already can read on the internet. But, but um, I don't. You know, you're just gonna have to wait and see because the dynamic that me and Rosemary have when we're in a ring together or when we're doing a promo together um, is just so special that there's no way we couldn't have done something, right? So, uh, you know, there's a lot still yet to come um, from some of the stuff we filmed back in January. So. Um, you're all just going to have to be a little more patient, and uh, it's going to be completely worth it. And I can't wait to discuss more of that when it actually, you know, when some of the the craziness airs and you see some more magic between me and Rosemary. Fab, thanks for your time. No problem. Uh, Taya, first off, thanks for sharing your time with us today. Uh, this is Harry from NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247. Hello. Um, hello, ma'am. Um, we have seen WWE promoting their Mixed Match Challenge. However, it's always been men against men and women against women. You, mm-hmm. coming from a background, are uh, more accustomed in a Mixed Match to be facing a man and a woman at the same time. Um, mm mm-hmm. Is there any one male competitor in Impact or Lucha that you would like to step into the ring with? I <laughs> just one. <laughs> I really think like I think that I could hold my own against anybody on that on either one of the rosters, and um, I'm I'm an adv- I'm an advocate for intergender wrestling because it is been such a predominant part of my, you know, wrestling history, especially because Lucha Libre in Mexico, everyone has been doing matches, men men versus women in these mixed atomical matches forever, as I like to say, since the beginning of time. So um, for me, it was just, you know, natural for me to get to Lucha and, and be wrestling guys and stuff. And it's been really different for me getting to Impact where I only do get to face women. Um, but I've always, you know, I've have written on Twitter, I called out the exhibition a few times, but... <laughs> So we have yet to see if that would happen. But honestly, I just, I would face anybody. I think that, um, you know, I am a strong um, competitor. I have, you know, trained with men, women, minis, exoticos, wrestled any, you know, all types of matches, extreme matches, table matches, ladder matches. Um, And I just think that it's, maybe you should ask them if they, you know, like I just think that men and women were just, size and whatever like i'm just a warrior in a ring wanting to face the best people i don't necessarily think of it as facing a man or or them facing me as a woman and i don't like women to be viewed as the weaker um gender because we're not we are tough we always have to fight for our rights for anything like we're always competing we're always being put against each other if not you know it's it's crazy in the wrestling world and i think that that happens in all aspects of the entertainment industry and in right you know in the regular world too um so i mean i would take on absolutely any man who has the guts to face me <laughs> should be the question because i am ready for anything and i think I'm probably more prepared in that intergender combat than any man on the on the impact roster would be because probably they would they just probably wouldn't expect what I would bring to the table. Jim Barcelona with MiamiHerald.com. Interested in your ballet background and did ballet help in any aspect of pro wrestling? And do you, do you have any interest? of performing in the National Ballet of Canada? Um, I was a classically trained ballerina since I was about four years old. It was like the first time I I, uh, was taken to a ballet class, and I instantly fell in love. I was in gymnastics and all sorts of, you know, 
stuff like that. Um, I just, you know, I, I obviously that was a huge part of my life growing up. I went to the University of Calgary and trained with the Alberta Ballet Company and spent many summers growing up being shipped away to these incredible dance facilities like the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. I was ex- accepted to different places in Quebec um, when I was really young too and performed the Nutcracker and all sorts of things with professional companies throughout my childhood. Um, and I absolutely think dance helped with my wrestling. Um, it's a performance art and wrestling is a performance art. So I just, um, you know, there's so many things that translate and people are always like, how, what do your parents feel like? Like you became a pro wrestler from a ballerina. And honestly, my parents, they get it because I've explained it to them in a way where this is my art form. Um, I'm creating a piece of art that can't be replicated every time I step in that ring. And I believe that dance performance is the same way. So I absolutely think that it helps me get to where I am today. Thank you. No problem. This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. I read that you participated in a reality series with Rowdy Roddy Piper, and I was wondering yes. what it was like working with him <laughs> and if you have any stories from that. Um, it really was incredible. He was such, uh, you know, he had so much energy the second he stepped into the room. I think none of us really, it was called World of Hurt. I did season one in Canada with Lance Storm as the coach, and then season two, um, um, Rowdy Roddy Piper was our coach, and we got to spend about a month with him. I can't remember how many there were. I think I want to say about, want to say about 10 of us. Um, and I mean, when we take say the word reality show, take that lightly. Because it was just a crazy kind of fun story idea of us being trained by this legend at this school in Canada. Um, he just was so intense. And I always say that he really had so much to do. I'll, I'll never forget, like promo day for me was probably one of the most memorable ones. And I think his, his explanation of, you know, getting your character across and having that passion that people can feel through the screen is, you know, something I try to bring every time I, I talk on the mic or, or am put in front of camera. So, I mean, I really was so blessed to have spent that time with him. May it be short, but, um, you know, it was really great. And that's something I'll probably, I'll never forget. Hi, it's Oliver Newman here from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. And I just wanted to ask, um, you said you attended the University of Calgary. Uh, That's a two-part question, really. Uh, What did you study at, at, at university and what was your experience like? At university? Yeah. Um, I was at the University of Calgary. I left home, like, right after high school. I was 17. I could not wait to get out of Victoria (laughs) and explore the world. Um, So I went to Calgary. There were only two different universities in Calgary that offered dance programs. Um, I believe one was at York University in Ontario, and then there was the University of Calgary. So since I was familiar with the Alberta Ballet Company from doing some work with them, um, you know, growing up, I, I picked that one, and I was there training at the university. Sorry, I was going and taking classes during the day. And then intermittently, we would actually travel downtown Calgary to go train at the Alberta Ballet Company School. So it was pretty crazy. Like when I think about it, we were getting up at, you know, seven in the morning, taking regular classes and then going off and and, um, doing all the physicality of ballet. I also trained, I also, sorry, studied kinesiology because that was part of the program. And, uh, you know, it was a really interesting, crazy time in my life where I was just discovering myself as an, like as a young adult and everything. It was the first time I had moved away from home for such a long period of time. But, um, you know, it was, it was a great time in my life. Calgary it was one of my favorite places to live. I lived there for, you know, 10 years until I moved to Mexico. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget that some of my best friends still live there. I went Storm's Wrestling School is there. And Calgary has such a huge, um, you know, wrestling history so it was really cool for me that when I decided to get into wrestling it was there um so I absolutely love you know go Calgary Flames <laughs> I'm still a Calgary fan um don't tell the Vancouver Canucks but um I just had a great time there and the university there was really great and it totally helped me really discover what I wanted to do and it really helped me grow up
Hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sportskira in India. So I had a chance to interview Rosemary recently, and she said that uh, even though your match at Bond for Glory didn't happen, it uh, increased the tension between the two characters. Uh, can you describe the kind of chemistry that you have with her? Because I mean, it's it's very cool to see on screen. Thank you. Uh oh, no problem. Um, well, like I said, I just from the first second I got to wrestle Rosemary. I mean, I was looking forward to it for I had wanted to work with her for so long. So when we finally faced each other, it really was really was great. You know, from Canadian to Canadian, we just just have such an understanding of ourselves, like of each other. Um, and you know, when you really want something and it's so close and then you can't have it, um, it just makes that tension grow. So that's why I think the intensity that you're going to see from me and her over the next, the course of the next few weeks is going to be so much greater than it was in the fall because we just wanted to have that blow off so bad. And, you know, um, it's hard to be patient myself. Sometimes I'm the most impatient person. So, you know, it just made me just think about what I wanted to do you know, be that much more intense with my movement, with my performance, and uh, hopefully it comes across and that you guys enjoy what we what we created. Hi, uh, Mike Hill from ProWrestling.com. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. I just wanted to drop back a couple questions where you're talking about intergender uh, wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, Brian Cage recently had just an incredible match with uh, Tessa Blanchard. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but um, it, if if people, uh, a lot of people don't necessarily like intergender wrestling or it's just not their thing, but I have a feeling that maybe it's just they haven't seen the right matches, perhaps, or the right stories being told. Is there anything maybe from your career or something that you've seen recently that if someone were to, to bring that question up to you, sort of what direction would you point them in? Well, I consider myself the OG in Brian Cage versus female wrestler. <laughs> wrestler. Sure. So, um, no, I actually didn't see the whole match. Tessa and Brian are very good friends of mine. So um, I spoke to both of them about it, and they were really excited about the reception they got from it. And, of course, there's always going to be some people that don't like it. But, you know, anything that's if something doesn't make people uncomfortable, you know, then you're not doing something right. I feel like in the arts, you know, in performing arts and in visual arts and everything, you know, so I'm glad that they had such an amazing match. And, of course, they were going to have great chemistry. They're both such great workers and have so much passion for what they're doing. I mean, for as far as, like, recently, I've been, like, I haven't, um, that would probably be the most recent one that um, I could think of. But, um, I mean, for me, like, even my match in season three versus Sammy Callahan, you could really tell, or sorry, Jeremiah Crane, um, you could really tell that uh, we were just really going back and forth. There was no sort of one person dominating the other person. It was just two people with that just wanted to win and had nothing else but that in their sight. So I think that that's what people have to really realize is that, like I said before, we're two warriors. And I think that that's what Lucha Underground has really done as far as inter- for inter- intergender wrestling is I know it takes place in this crazy world where dragons look you know, throw blow fire and um, people die and come back to life and time travelers and all sorts of craziness. But it, they are putting us in a position to just be those two characters. For example, like in Mortal Kombat, you can be a girl and you can be a guy character and they can both fight. No one has a problem with Wonder Woman taking on men. Do you know what I mean? No one ever looks at that and thinks it's, oh, that's fake because it's a movie, you know? So when I, when people look at Lucha Underground and complain about interjection or thing. I'm like, this is a fantasy television series. And in wrestling, it's an art form. You know what I mean? So think outside the box, you know, research some intergender wrestling, find, you know, try to find some people that are known for that. I mean, obviously people like Joey Ryan have been wrestling intergender forever. Same with Candice LeRae. I've got tons of intergender matches. Tessa Blanchard has tons of intergender matches. There is tons of stuff out there for people to see and appreciate and can, so they can realize that it's not a man beating up a woman or a woman beating up a man. It's two people fighting to win. So, I mean, it's 2018 people. (laughs) Come on now. Like when Catwoman fought Batman, no one cared. <laughs> and now all of a sudden it's a problem. So, or they just feel uncomfortable about it, but really we're just two warriors trying to win. So that would be what I would say. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, Ryan Dolbin from the gorilla com. Obviously you've hey. had a ton of success in Mexico and I'm just wondering how much do you enjoy the Lucha Libre style of wrestling and how much do you think it will blend or how much do you think it does blend with the American style? I, I, was, I mean, I just was so, um, I was, you know, just so surrounded by it for so long. And I really like, I've been wrestling Lucha Libre style like three times longer than I was wrestling American style. I mean, I was only wrestling on the Indies in America and Canada for like a year year and a half before I moved to Mexico. So my style is heavily influenced by Lucha Libre because, you know, a lot of my other, co- all of my coaches in Mexico were Lucha Libre legends, like El Apache, um, Silver King, um, El Hijo de Perro Guayu, Conan, all these mentors that I had. So I just, I'm really excited that now the Lucha Libre style has, is, has gained momentum and has become so popular um, and that people are really becoming more interested in it because it really wasn't like that five years ago. So it's, it's interesting and cool to see even the wrestlers, you know, the wrestlers on the indies take take Lucha Libre influences and, and put them in, put that in their matches and really try to think outside the box, outside of the norm. Um, so it makes me, it makes me really excited to see people get pumped up about Lucha Libre shows and about the culture and the masks and everything else. And, you know, Lucha Libre isn't just a fancy arm drag or a pass by or, you know, all those kind of things you think about when you think about a Lucha style ma- match. It's the costumes. It's the characters, the out, you know, the the way the fans react to you. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about wrestling in Los Angeles is it's just so many Lucha Libre fans. They react like fans in Mexico, and that's contagious. Do you know what I mean? It's amazing, and it makes my job so much more fun and easy. So um, it's just – it's really great to see, and I hope that it keeps growing and that people are – you know, people like Angelico, Jack Evans, and um, a lot of the Lucha Underground roster who have really created this hybrid style – that you're seeing. I mean, think about Johnny Impact. He's brought a lot of that that hybrid style to to Impact itself. And I also try to incorporate all my Lucha Libre, little Lucha Libre touches within my matches, even though the style might be different. But that's what makes it cool. And that's what makes things have layers and isn't just what the norm normal thing that people would expect from an American style match. And I mean, I'm even seeing, you know, all the X Division on Impact is doing so many lucha inspired stuff and all the dives that people are doing now and taking bigger risks that's lucha libre and so it makes me very happy that i not only came from that but i'm now seeing it grow and really take take on the world head on in the wrestling community so hello Tyra. this is stephanie for steel chair magazine in uk Probably the the only woman you're going to listen to tonight. So. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so my time. Um, I was uh, wanted to ask you a lot of questions about intergender matches that you did, and uh, just wanted to know that I'm a huge fan of it as a woman, and I consider mm-hmm. it as completely natural, which is good. yes. Uh, but I wanted to tell you about the women's evolution. If we, if mm-hmm. we can say something like that. Um, do you consider that um, uh, women's wrestling has uh, taken a new step over the last few years? And at the same time, uh, is Impact the base place right now um, to come up and show talent as, an, as, as a woman? Um, I think that the women evolution, revolution, whatever you want to call it, has been going on forever. I I don't think that it's necessarily started over the last few years. I think that people, you know, in the the 80s and 90s were fighting to, when you think about someone like Medusa and you think of the the Lita and Trish, um, you know, feud from back then. And also, you know, TNA and the Impact Knockouts have been like leading this revolution, I feel like, for years before, you know, WWE acknowledged it as much as we are now. Um, I'm just happy to be part of somewhere where I really do remember watching the knockouts years ago and being like, wow, like these girls are really putting on a crazy match and being given the time to do it. Like think about Gail Kim and Awesome Kong and, and, you know, all those, you know, that generation of knockouts that really, really stepped it up and brought it. And I, and I do think that now it's getting more media attention, the women's revolution, especially over the last few years, and that as women on the indie scene, we are getting, you know, bigger opportunities to showcase our talents, which makes me so happy because there's 
so many talented women out there that are just fighting tooth and nail to get the recognition they deserve. And um, I'm just happy that, you know, the TV outlets are, are really supporting this new generation and supporting the idea that women, you know, can wrestle, that we are strong, that we can put on a show, that people want to see us battle and that we can main event and that we are worthy of that spot and that we are worthy of having more than one match on a show. You know, I, and I, that just makes me so happy and makes my heart burst because I think that women since forever have been fighting for that recognition within this sport. You earned it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Ty. It's uh, Greg Oliver from uh, Slam Wrestling. Uh, I'd like to know the the fundamental differences when you went to learn the North American style under Lance Storm, and then you moved down to Mexico and you learned the the Lucha style. I mean, what what are the differences in training? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> well, let's just say first of all, um, training at Lance's school is I will say this over and over, and it's the best best place to learn. Lance is the best when it comes to really teaching everybody the fundamentals and sending you on your way ready to be a pro wrestler. Um, when I went to Mexico, the main difference was Lucha Libre there in Mexico is the second most favorite, like, sorry, most popular sport to soccer in the country. So you can imagine that there is so many more opportunities to train. So every, almost every gym in Mexico city has a ring there, not a good ring, but a ring. And there are people training there all the time. And I mean, I was training it three times a week or sorry, a day, three times a day. I would go with El Apache in the morning at this place called star gym, which I had to take like three subways to, but I went there every day. And then I would go train with sky day in the afternoon and the other gym. And then at nighttime I would train with silver King in the downtown. Um, the training was just so mental. Like <laughs> it was so intense. I mean, it's to start, everything is to the right, not the left. The t I didn't speak Spanish when I went there, so I was just guessing as to what was going on a lot of the time and just trying to watch people do a routine and then they would go, okay, you, you go in. And I had no idea what, like, I just, it was like I had never, it, it was like I was just learning to ride a bike all over again because it was that different. Just the way they feed for things, turning to a different side than we do in American style, the right hand. They refer to everything as a suplex there. So they'd be t calling suplexes, but they meant arm drag. Like, it's just... So many things are different. I didn't even know back then what a pass by was because Lucha Libre style wasn't popular and nobody was doing that. Um, do you know what I mean? So it was such a learning curve for me, but I just drowned myself in it. And it was all I did for so long just to get, you know, that spot. And when I first went to Mexico, people, a lot of people don't know this. I wasn't signed to AAA. I was trying to get that opportunity. So for me, it just, and everyone, Conan would tell me all the time, you know, you got to learn the Lucha Libre style. You got to learn the Lucha Libre style. And I just, I just, you know, did what I had to do to be training every single day and really watching as many matches as I could. I would travel to go watch live events because you can see live wrestling in Mexico City almost every day. So I would really go out of my way to, to try and understand what was going on because it is so completely different. Um, I mean, if anybody wants to really learn the Lucha style, the best way to do it is go to Mexico City and get off that airplane and find, you know what I mean? Like find people that will mentor you and help you because it is so much more than an arm drag or, or, or you know, a way of running the ropes. Um, but it, it's just, it is so completely different. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Uh, I really wanted to uh, hear the process of the Lucha Underground Impact Partnership kind of coming about because a couple of years ago, that was definitely not the case. There was a pretty public issue with, with Hernandez. But uh, now you have the ability and do work for both Impact and Lucha Underground. So maybe kind of walk me through your reaction to hearing that news and how the process for you to work both uh, started. Um. I mean, yeah, it was definitely not an option a few years ago because we were very exclusively signed to Lucha Underground. Um, but there was a long period of, time, of downtime between season three and season four um, where I think a lot of people got a little antsy and, uh, you know, where we were all just really looking to, to keep working. You know, we wanted to keep moving forward with our careers and with our lives and things. And um, I had known Karen and Jeff Jarrett for years because they would come down to Mexico all the time and work for AAA. Um, and uh, 
they had always asked me to come and, and work for Impact, and I just didn't have the opportunity to. So when they asked me and John again, and all of a sudden, when we asked if we could go do this, there what the answer wasn't no anymore. It was just like this crazy moment. You're like, oh my gosh, this is really going to happen. Um, it was just it was a long time coming. I was wanting to you know work with them for so long, and Karen, Karen and Jeff were just so gracious and uh, and allowing us to to start working there with them and being involved with Impact. And uh, I just knew that I wanted to keep my character separate, keep my character separate, and really just bring some bring something different to that knockouts division. So I'm just so blessed that I'm able to do both. And now I'm, you know, the only woman on either roster that's, you know, involved on two different television series at the same time. So it's really cool. Hi, Taya. This is uh, Nick Hausman from WrestleZone.com. Um, Hello. I wanted to uh, ask... Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you about Sammy Callahan and uh, Eddie Edwards. Um, what was your take on that incident, and uh, what do you think of Sammy um, coming out and saying that he's not going to retire the baseball bat uh, from his arsenal? He's going to keep using it on opponents. Oh, my. This is a little sensitive subject. Right now. <laughs> I honestly haven't been keeping up with what's been going on very much because I've been so busy uh, filming and things, and I have seen Sammy obviously at Lucha and stuff. Um, I think that that's a question better asked to him because I really don't know what to say about it because it was just such a, it was an accident. You know, things happen. Obviously, like no one means to hurt any. Like it's, it's just so, it just really sucks, and it was a horrible thing that happened. Um, and you know, we're all gonna hopefully make sure that that doesn't happen again. But. As far as like how he feels about it and stuff, I really feel like I don't have a complete answer for you, so you should probably ask him. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. No problem. It's I, uh, Sean Ross Sapp of uh, Fightful dot com here again. Uh, you have worked with both Rosemary and Sexy Star in the past, and I know this situation is a little older, but. Uh, what were your feelings about how that went down, and uh, have you spoken to either of them about that situation since it did go down? Um, yeah, this I mean, this is this happened last August. I think I've been pretty. I I said what I had to say when it first happened. Uh, I had worked with, you know, wrestled with Rosemary about two weeks before that went down, um, and that was my first experience with her in a ring, and she's nothing but class, and. Uh, so when that happened, I was very, this was like I've said, I've, I was just really disappointed. I, we're trying to make strides in women's wrestling. And sometimes I think we're each other's worst enemies sometimes. You know, it, it just was, it was just a really shitty situation that was, you know, I don't ever want to see anybody get hurt in that way. We're athletes and I, you know, we need each other as dance partners. I can't wrestle by myself. <laughs> Rosemary can't wrestle by herself. Sexy Star can't wrestle by herself. So we have to have a level of trust in each other that's so huge to just even get in the ring and face one another. So I just felt really disappointed. And obviously I've spoken to Rosemary um, since then. I have not spoken to Sexy Star at all. Um, but, uh, you know, I think everyone's moved forward from that. And I think that you know, we just have to remember that we don't want that to happen again. And uh, no one ever wants to see someone that's, you know, get hurt like that. I just, it's not cool. <laughs> that's pretty much all I can say about it. Jim Varsalom, I'm Harold.com. What are the advantages of having a wrestling ring in the backyard? And have, been, <laughs> have there been other wrestlers that have come over to train in the backyard? <sighs> Okay, so for everybody that doesn't know, at Johnny Impact and Ty Valkyrie's house, we have a ring in our backyard with full crash pads, and, you know, it looks like a mini dojo there. Um, it's great. I mean, I've had friends come over and uh, and train with me, um, Laura James, Joey Ryan's come over, Luchasaurus is here all the time. Um, it's just, it's, it just is so great to have access to 
what you need to train wrestling every single day. So if you come up with a crazy idea in the middle of the night, you can go out there and work on it. <laughs> Not sure that the neighbors like it very much, but uh, we have a great time with it. And um, it's great to be able to, you know, train cardio differently in a way that is beneficial to my wrestling in the ring, as opposed to being on a treadmill or something like that. And not to have to literally, I can just walk out the patio door on my balcony and there's my ring. So um, it's really beneficial and it really keeps us creative. And Johnny and I are always in there um, training and stuff. So it's really, really great. I wish that, I think it's any pro wrestler's dream to be able to have access to a ring like that. So I'm very, very fortunate. Thank you. No problem. Hey, uh, this is Richie from Smoothkida again. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that you were a fan of uh, a lot of the knockouts in Impact Wrestling before you came here. Um, I, my question is, I mean, uh, what inspired you to come to Impact Wrestling and who in particular were you a fan of, I mean, both uh, among the men and the women? Sorry, I didn't understand the last part of that. Can you say it one more time? Hold on, Riju, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Right. Uh, so, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, my sec- the second part of my question is, uh, who uh, were some of the knockouts and some of the um, uh, guys that you were a fan of uh, in Impact Wrestling, like right uh, before you had come to the company? Oh, who who did I enjoy watching before I came to the company? Yes, yes, yes. Um. Well. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Gail Kim's. I have for forever. So she's always been right up there. Awesome Kong. I mean, I got to wrestle her recently and that was just like, that was a huge dream of mine to get to face her. I mean, I remember the beautiful people and and all of that. I just, there's so many like really great knockouts that have come through that locker room and who really had to fight to, you know, to get respect in women's wrestling and, and fight for, for recognition as being really great athletes. And I think that that just motivates me every day to keep that legacy going. And I mean, in, as far as the men are concerned, there's been so, I mean, how can I, I can't pick like one or two. There's, you know, the Samoa Joes and the AJ Styles and, you know, all these people that have come through there um, that have been just great. And even now, like, I, like, I love watching Eli Drake cut a promo. I just, Austin Aries is awesome. Uh, it's, it's really great to be working with people that are just so inspired all the time. And that just inspires me. So it's, it's quite, it's quite great to be part of that locker room. Uh, Marcus Green here with Total Wrestling Magazine. Hi, Taya. Hi. Hi. Um, you've grown so much over your time from Lucha from AAA to Lucha Underground and now Impact, you've also faced some phenomenal talent along the way. I was just wondering, uh, when it comes to possible female acquisitions, when it comes to Impact, who would you like to see, whether it be veteran talent or maybe up and coming that you would like to see, you know, maybe come to the company and face off with you? Hmm. Oh my gosh. I don't know. If anyone's familiar with the female contingent of the indie wrestling scene right now, they realize that there are just, so many girls out there that are so great. Um, Oh gosh. I think most of the people that I would have liked to see on the, on the roster have like come to the roster. And I mean, I, I loved wrestling Jessica Havoc, especially because she was one of the first people I wrestled when I moved to California from Mexico city. And she was just so, um, she was just such a nice person. <laughs> and I know she's been on impact before, but I think that she would be a really great addition to the roster. I mean, if you just watch the bar wrestling shows that we, that Joey Ryan runs in LA, you'll see some of the great, some really great new uh, female talent as well as, um, you know, there's just, it's just everywhere. I mean, I'd love lady Shani from Mexico. She works for AAA to come and be on impact because I think she would bring a crazy, some crazy flavor to the locker room. Um, so yeah, it's just there's just so many people out there right now that I mean, the level of talent in the um, in female and women's wrestling right now is just I don't think it's ever been like this before. It's really great to see. So I mean, honestly, there's just so many of them out there. I don't think I can off the top of my head. I I can't really think of a specific name, but I would be more than welcoming to anybody that 
would want to come and test it out and and really prove their that they belong there, you know. So bring it on, ladies. <laughs> Hi, Taya. It's Adam of the Impact Lounge again. Um, everyone loves a good wrestling wedding, and uh, uh, obviously yeah. because they're usually so long-lasting and run smoothly. Have you? Would you like to have your own in-ring wedding with uh, Johnny on the show, or do you think that uh, that's not something that fits your character? Oh, which character are you talking about? Are you talking <laughs> <laughs> Impact Taya, or are you talking about Lucha Underground Taya? I feel like Impact Taya doesn't even know Johnny Impact, so that wouldn't even really make any sense. I'm like, Johnny Mundo and Taya have been affiliated now for this will be a third season, so, I mean, you never know what could happen. It, wrestling weddings are a, cla- are a classic scene in the wrestling world, <laughs> so who knows? Uh I'm just more excited about our real wedding that's coming up in a few months. I'm less than three months away. It's actually really scary and exciting at the same time. It's creeping up. So that's really what I'm focused on right now is actually getting down the aisle with to marry my best friend and uh, in front of all of our family and friends. So, yeah. Fair enough and good luck. Thank you. Hey, Ty, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing good. So over the course of this conference call, you talked a lot about the different places you've gone and trained. And I think one of the things that stands out about your career is this kind of like an eclectic background that's kind of helped get you to where you are. What advice mm-hmm. do you give to women who are breaking into the independence now or are training at schools in terms of pushing themselves outside of the boundaries of where they are geographically and going out to learn different mm-hmm. styles? Because I think what you did is very different than what most talents first breaking into the business do they break in and they work in a certain geographic area then as they start to build the name and get some buzz they might get booked elsewhere you had a very different sort of path to where you are now what advice can you give to others about how they should follow that path or or maybe take a similar tack to what you did well i think that if i had a daughter and my daughter told me that she was going to mexico i would <laughs> probably flip out and say no. So, I mean, I understand that what I did was a little bit nuts, um, but I also didn't allow anything to keep, to restrict me. So I've said this before, like I was offered a WWE contract and then it fell through. I was absolutely more of like, just so depressed and sad and disappointed that, you know, I had this dream and it was given to me and then it was taken away. So when the Mexico thing came up, I really just on pure guts and gumption and, and, you know, crazy vibes of just wanting to accomplish my dream. I went for it. And I think that some people, and I really didn't think about it. And that's probably very stupid (laughs) to a certain degree. And I'm lucky enough that I met the right people that took care of me and protected me and led me on the right track. And I know that out there, like it's a scary world out there, especially now and things can get a little nuts, but, um, you know what? I wouldn't. I would never take it back. I went with my gut. I did what I had to do. I had. I trained. I wrestled. I sacrificed. I had money. I didn't have any money. I was, you know, living in a tiny apartment in downtown Mexico City. I lived in a house with Conan, who completely took care of me for like a, the longest time, and still is a huge part of my life. And that's one of those people that has like totally helped me get through this. So I feel like. If you want to be a pro wrestler, if you want to be anything in your life, there's always going to be a moment where you have to make that decision to either pick one path or the other. And I picked the crazy, curvy, bumpy road, which was going to Mexico, but in the end, it was the right decision. So I think that women breaking in now, you know, look for those different opportunities. Don't do the cookie. Don't do it the cookie cutter way. That's not even fun. <laughs> it's a, It's always more interesting and, you know, a little bit. I I don't know. Like, I just think that all those challenges that I had made me who I am and I wouldn't have gotten to where I am if those things didn't happen to me. And I didn't have to face those crazy obstacles that were living in Mexico that were breaking into, you know, a Lucha Libre as a Canadian um, blonde chick, you know, that was no Spanish. I mean, those things just created Ty Valkyrie and Taya that you see today on Lucha and on impact and just take a chance. If this is what you really want to do, ask questions, find different teachers, find people that know, you know, that don't, haven't taken that, you know, normal path and really pick their brain. And I, 
I always say, I'm like, if anybody has any questions that shows for me, absolutely feel free to ask me. Um, I'll always be honest. I'm a very, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I will tell you, you know, my opinion about things. Um, and I just say like, find, take that road less traveled, push yourself. You have no limitations, but the limits you put on yourself. So create that destiny and create that life that you want. And if it's in wrestling, then do what you have to do. Travel to where you have to travel, sleep on the floor, eat rice for a month. You know, like that's what, you know, that's, that's what makes this work, like this life unbelievable and crazy. You know, there's going to be those harsh moments, but the payoff is just so great when you actually do get through to the end. And now I get to, you know, have this wonderful life and, I'm still busting my butt every day and training every day and it's still stressful. It's still hard. Nothing is ever easy, but it's worth it because I get to do what I love every, you know, every week. And uh, I have such an amazing supportive group of friends and a fiance that, you know, has truly given me a life that I never thought was possible. And all of that came from wrestling and all of that came from the sacrifice that I made and making that decision to go to Mexico and not taking that simple road. So that's what I would tell women. Good afternoon, Taya. Andre Corbeil from Wrestling Wrestling.com. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. A lot of snow up here, and that's basically surrounding my question today. <laughs> it's no secret Johnny Impact wears a fur coat, and he's from California, which is a little <laughs> odd, but, yeah. but it could come into play in Victoria, Canada. How does mm-hmm. Johnny take in Canada's garden capital, which can also be pretty snowy at times? Actually, you're wrong. Victoria is notorious for not having any snow. For rain. For rain. <laughs> rain. Rain. It has rain in the winter, but on the snow front, not so much. Actually, I think this year they actually had snow, and it was like the whole city shut down because no one knows what to do. <laughs> but um, John has been to Victoria. He's been there a few times um, to visit my family and just to see where I – obviously where I grew up and stuff. Um, he loves it. I brought him to Vancouver. We went to a Canucks game. I'm trying to turn him into a little L.A. Canuck as much as I can. Uh, <laughs> but the fur coats have never made it all the way to Canada with us on a vacation. But no, front, no, not so much. If I take him to Calgary in the middle of winter, he will definitely need it. <laughs> uh, Stephanie from Future Magazine again. Thank you, Taya. Uh for for your time. Um, in Lucha Underground, women can own championships, male mm-hmm. championships. And at the same time, uh, James Ellsworth created this new intergender title. So it's a blue mm-hmm. and red. Uh, I see it right now. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that um, on impact or every other federation promotion, uh, a woman can hold a male title, and would you be interested in competing for this intergender uh, belt? And thank you again. Uh, no problem. Where did you say the intergender belt was? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Jam Salesworth who created this uh, this intergender title. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, I think that if I mean, I obviously would. I'm not scared of anything. <laughs> At this point, um, I would absolutely face anyone for any championship um, I, because I think that I can hold my own. Uh, and I, obviously, I would love to go up, up against whoever is the champion right now for an intergender championship belt. That's really cool. Um, I didn't know that. Um, and that's it's very an interesting uh, thought on it. And, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, the more co- cool wrestling matches I can have, the better at this point. So um, bring it on. Thank you. No problem. Taya, this is Harry from uh, NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 once again. And we're going to dip our toes in the pool of controversy here. Uh, Okay. Okay. We're going to go back to the infamous Sexy Star incident at Triple Mania last year. What I'm wondering is, do you feel that Sexy should be given another opportunity and if it were possible, would you book Sexy and Rosemary in a match to settle the score? Oh, my gosh. That is like, <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble with answering that question. 
<laughs> oh man, I don't even think I can answer that question. Uh, it's just, I think I've touched on it enough that I don't need to like, you know, respond to that because it was so long ago that, and I've really, like I said, I'm very honest. I'm like the worst liar in the entire planet. Like I can't, like, I'm very honest. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I always, I'm passionate about everything I talk about. Um, so I just think that I've been pretty vocal about how I feel about that um, in its in its time. And now we were, I'm just trying to move on from it. So I'm just not even going to, I'm not even going to go with that. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. <clears throat> I had the, uh, the chance to speak to Rosemary actually right before this call. And I kind of want to pose the same question that I did to her, to you. You both have very powerful characters and they seem to resonate with young female fans. How do you feel about being a role, role model to girls? And why do you think, what do you think is so appealing about the, the Taya character to uh, maybe young, impressionable teenagers? I mean, it's, it's amazing to be able to be, uh, you know, a role model to, to young girls. And uh, I felt that a lot in Mexico too with when I was working there, just, I mean, I remember growing up and characters in movies and on TV that I would look up to and stuff. And it was to think that people think of me that way is just really unbelievable. I think that our world is so like the world that we live in nowadays is so serious and negative And like, there's so much bad stuff going on that any moment people can be taken away with a little bit of fantasy and a little bit of, of, of pro wrestling is been, you know, is great. And if we resonate with young girls and, inspire them to believe in themselves or be strong or stand up to a bully or be different. I mean, we look, me and Rosemary both are very different characters than you would stereotypically see um, in pro wrestling. So if I can inspire someone to realize that being different is okay and, and looking as, you know, not to just be yourself. And uh, then that's a, that's a great thing. You know, that's the power of, of pro wrestling right there. So it makes me very happy to think about that. This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com again. Uh, you've talked a lot about being trained with Lance Storm. I'm wondering if uh, Laurel Van Ness was there at the same time as you were training and what you think about her leaving in patch wrestling. Oh, Laurel Van Ness. Uh, <laughs> I love Chelsea. Uh, yeah, we're actually both from the same town, hometown. See, we're both from Victoria, BC. Um, we were both trained by Lance Storm, but she was trained by Lance, I want to say, three years after I was there. I remember her messaging me a few times while I was in Mexico, just asking me questions about things and just being such a sweet girl. So I'm so happy with how far she's come and proud of her. And I feel like She's representing SWA so well. And, uh, you know, as far as her leaving impact, sometimes we have to step away from things that we love because we think it's a good decision or, or whatever it is, you know, we don't know what, how she, you know, her personal reasons or what's going on in her head. People only speculate and, and things like that. So, I mean, if she just needs this time to figure out what she wants or, and, and move forward or, or return or whatever her, her future plans hold, I mean, it's really up to her. So, I'll support her no matter what she decides to do. And uh, she's just like such a young, fun spirit that's just trying to make it in this crazy world. So, you know, I'm really proud of her. Hey, this is Bridget from Sotskira again. Um, I just want to be a take on your fellow Canadian Ali. And uh, like, uh, would you like to chase her in the future? Sorry, I'm, can you speak a little bit slower? I'm just having trouble. It's like muffled a little bit. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I just wanted your opinion on Ali, uh, your fellow Canadian, Allie, and whether Allie, you want. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Right. Um, I and whether you want to have a program. Um, well, Ali, I met years ago when we actually went to a FCW tryout. Oh God, when would this have been? Like six years ago <laughs> together when she was still wrestling as cherry bomb and living in Canada and stuff. So she's, I mean, us Canadian girls, we always got to support each other um, because it's hard. It's, it's hard, um, you know, making it of Canada and, and finding your way into other countries and things like that. I would absolutely love to work a program with her or something. I think she's really talented. I love her character on impact. Um, and I really think that uh, her bubbly fun, 
cuteness versus Taya's harsh coldness would be a really fun a little storyline for us. So hopefully we get to face each other um, in the impact zone very soon. Jim Barcelona, MiamiHerald.com. You mentioned Conan a few times. I'm wondering, uh, what are your, what's your thoughts of the knockout division currently? And I don't know if you got a chance to talk to Conan about Diamante, who's part of LAX. She's coming off mm-hmm. an injury, hasn't really got a chance to wrestle per se, but she's been involved in some of the action of LAX. And just your thoughts about the knockouts division. Um, well, I think Diamante is great. Um, I actually am, I'm really, really want to wrestle her because – I know I can, we could really do some crazy Lucha stuff together, uh, which would be awesome. She's so small and high flying and things like that. So I think that us together would be a really cool, different match. Um, So hopefully that happens um, in the impact zone. And if not, obviously I'd absolutely love to face her on the Indies somewhere. Um, She's a firecracker. So (laughs) I can't wait to see her back. And I just think that the knockout division right now is, full of such different characters and, and things like, you know, it's just, it's only the tip of the iceberg is what, what we can do. And I hope that this year really gives us so many, you know, more great moments, bring so many more great moments for all of us and uh, that the world can really see that we're leading this revolution and we're really trying to stand out, um, uh, you know, within the sport at this time. So the future is, is, is looking quite bright, I think. And with new additions like Sue and Kara Hogan and things like that, I think that um, we're only going up from here. So it's it's an exciting time. And Taya, this is Harry from Pro Wrestling 247 NBC Sports Radio again. Um, Hi. Donnie has a workout regimen that is bar none, you know, top of the line. And I'm wondering, how do you feel about his sort of an obsession with his workout regimen and how he gets <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, yeah, Johnny has always been a workout freak. I mean, if it's not uh, – I mean, we always go to the gym together all the time. We don't necessarily work out together because he does different types of workout that I do. But sometimes we do, and uh, it's – so great because he pushes me so much more than I could ever push myself. Um, he also trains parkour. He goes to gymnastic sessions. He's in the backyard type roping on the ring around <laughs> at one in the morning. He's constantly trying to evolve and get better and, you know, just stay on the ball when it comes to his wrestling and his physicality and his acrobats and his dives and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I don't think there's anybody out there in any federation that is like him or that wrestles like him. Hi, Ty. This is Nick Hausman from WrestleZone again. Um, I While you were talking about your boyfriend there, uh, I wanted to also ask if you had any updates on Boone. Uh, I, I was a big Boone fan. I don't know if there's a sequel or if there's uh, any other plans for a series and if you may be involved at all in that. Oh my gosh, Boone the Bounty Hunter. If you haven't already seen it, it is on um, iTunes and Amazon. Please go and download it um, and review it because that would mean so much to John. He wants people, as many people to see this great movie that he invested so much time and money and passion, sweat and tears into. Um, so far, I have, we've, there's been many people that I've asked about Boone too. And John always jokes about Boone the musical, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens right now. There's, we're just, we're super busy with um, filming Lucha and, and all these kind of other things we have going on on the side. And of course, our wedding is priority number one on June 1st. I'm so excited. Um, so Hopefully he would write a sequel and of course I would love to be involved, you know, either be a bad guy or be his sidekick, who knows, but um, it would be really, really fun to be involved in something like that with him. Me and him, I love being, you know, coming up with creative ideas together if it's working on matches or promos and we both are so opinionated about things and uh, we don't always get like, well, we don't always have the same opinion, but I feel like that's what's so cool is we each push each other to come up with the best option or the best idea. And I would absolutely love to work with him on a movie project like that. 
Hi, we have a, a question, uh, email from uh, Lauren over in the UK. Uh, Impact Wrestling put uh, VIP packages on sale today for the April uh, uh, series, April 22 to 26. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in January, you were part of the Mini Golf Challenge. A, do you yes. plan to be part of Mini Golf again? Uh, would you assess your Mini Golf skills? And uh, Eli was the champion. Could you beat Eli in Mini Golf? <laughs> Okay, so if anybody saw any live feeds or video of us playing mini golf in January, they realized that I was the worst mini golf player. <laughs> it was so bad. I can't like I can't remember the last time I played mini golf either. So it was it was really entertaining. It was also very fun to kind of get to know some of the Impact fans on that first, you know, you know, to hang out with them for a few hours and stuff. And God, Eli Drake. Um, well, here I'm going to call Eli Drake out right now. <laughs> Call them out. Golf challenge in April. It's on. Um, I would absolutely love to uh, challenge him to a game, and I'm. I will try to practice between now and then so that I'm not as embarrassing <laughs> as I was in January. I don't want to throw you under the bus, Ty. You were, but at least you admitted it. The worst I've ever seen, as far as a. Oh my gosh, I was so bad. Like the ball was like in the bushes, in the fountain. It was like it was it was not it was not a good look. <laughs> but no well, one, you know, well, you I'm, will I'm have your, golfer, your chance so. uh, in April to redeem yourself. Okay, in April, it's on. <laughs> it's a Nifo Steel Chat magazine again. Uh, uh, thank you for all this time because. Uh, well, one hour now, and it's really cool. Um, one of the words that was associated with impact has been rebuilding, and uh, it comes again and again and again. Uh, there's no new bosses in town now, and um, new sheriffs in town, if I can say it like that. Um, do you think that, uh, it's a question I asked Rosemary, Last week, and uh, I'm going to ask you too. Do you think the the women, at the knockouts division, can be could be one of the key of this rebuilding? Rebuilding of of women's wrestling or rebuilding of of what? Sorry. Of impact. Uh, impact, of impact wrestling. Oh, I mean, I don't think we're trying to rebuild anything. I think we're just trying to grow. I feel like Impact has been doing an amazing job over the last you know, for uh, however many years and really trying to stand out and may it be controversial or not or, or however you want to look at it, like we have hundreds of thousands of fans and there's always going to be people throwing shade and, and hating on what we're doing and I and I feel like sometimes criticism, you know, with all the compliments comes criticism, you know. So, I mean, of course the women's division, the knockouts are going to be a huge part in growing our company and making it the best that it can be and you know, and rip, make it stand out. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to keep moving forward with that over the next few, you know, over the next year, few months, or how, however many years that I will be in impact. So, Perfect. Uh, Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com one more time. <clears throat> you talked about earlier the contrast in styles between yourself and Rosemary and a lot of companies and, and different divisions have been built on one or two people right there at the top. Obviously, you guys got some business to handle right now, but how do you feel about a long-term rivalry between the two of you? I'd absolutely love a long-term rivalry with her. I, The last long-term, really long-term rivalry I had would have been in Mexico versus Fabi Apache for many years. And, uh, you know, we had some pretty, pretty crazy memorable moments. So I... I think that that would be great. I'm absolutely open to that idea. And I just think that with a long rivalry, it's, you know, you're writing a book and you're just creating these special moments chapter by chapter. So I would absolutely love to, to have something like that with her. All righty, Taya. Well, I told you we'd go about 45 minutes. I've stretched it to uh, just over an hour. We, we appreciate your time very much. Um, I do actually have one follow-up question for you. You talked about the mini golf, which I will actually add. You were the best dressed mini golf player, without question, of everybody. Oh my there. gosh! Oh, thank you. Hands down. <laughs> um, but we're, we're also um, in April going to be doing some bowling, and Conan has, you know, who's uh, obviously long history with you, has flat out said he goes he wants to participate and will participate 
in bowling. How would you do in bowling, and could you beat Conan? Oh, my gosh. My bowling skills are definitely better than my golf skills. <laughs> Um, and Conan, you are going down, brother. <laughs> He's like my family, and I will, I will beat him. I just know I can beat him. I believe it. All right, let's bring, let's make that happen because it's, yeah. If he thinks he's gonna win, no, 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 it's on. <laughs> I'm very competitive, even though I suck at mini golf. I'm very competitive. <laughs> but you were the best dressed, so that's probably all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's not all that matters though. The performance counts. So I gotta get I gotta get better. <laughs> All right. Well, how about a final thought as we wrap it up for today? Well, I just want to thank everybody that tuned in and that had some great questions, and uh, thank you for everybody that's been so supportive through this, especially the last few months that have been a little, a little up and down with different problems and different things that have been going on. Um, but I really believe 2018 has started off so great for me, and uh, there's just so many great moments that are still coming with what we've done and impact and. Season four of Lucha Underground is the best yet. You guys are going to love it. Um, and I'm just blessed. I hate saying blessed because everyone always uses that word, but it's true to be doing what I love and to be doing it for all of you. So thank you very much. Perfect, Kaya. Thank you very much. Media, thank you very much for calling in. We will be back next week with the Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. Bye, guys. q and